Colin Klein is leaving Kansas State. That's bad news for them and for the Big 12 Conference. We'll discuss that and more on today's episode of the Big 12 Watch. I am your host, Josh Neighbors. This is Big 12 Watch on Crystal Ball College Football. We are part of the 365 Sports Network. You all can find us wherever you get your podcast and here on YouTube as well. If you are watching, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel and also leave your comments as well. Leave your thoughts on this and many other things. And uh, yeah, always love it when you guys do that. Find us wherever you get your podcast, five stars in those places. If you all want to find us on Twitter slash X at NWPod365 is the place to go. So the big news that came out uh, today is this, is that, or you know, the last couple of days, uh, Colin Klein is leaving Kansas State and he is going to Texas A&M to take on the offensive coordinator role, uh, the same role he has at K-State there at A&M. This is the second big coordinator loss in the Big 12 this off this offseason. Andy Kotelnicki uh, went to Penn State, obviously Kotelnicki from Kansas. And so there's, there's a few directions to go here, but I think a couple things, like let's kind of pair them up first together. So both of those things together are really bad news. Number one, I Kodal Dickey's offense is my favorite offense in the entire country to watch. Uh, I feel pretty confident in saying that. It's exciting. It's fun. I think it uses its players really well. It knows how to get the most out of everybody involved on each play, I feel like, or most of the plays. Uh, and then Colin Klein's offense is just really solid. And I think it empowers the quarterback in a way where it's like, you're not making every choice, right? But, um, you know, he's making a lot of decisions back there and, using all the, the quarterback skill sets. You know, I thought the way last year Klein had Will Howard spread the ball around was impressive. I liked the way this year that he had Wet Howard run a bit more too and and use that physicality and size and that ability to run. Um, I thought it was, you know, he runs a really good offense. And they had another good offense again this season. And when you think about those two guys moving on up, uh, the number one thing is like, this is the new reality. And look, those jobs are always jobs where you could climb anyway. But like Texas A&M has so much money and it's hard to compete with that, you know, for most people. I mean, they had the number one recruiting class. I think was it was it all time uh, a couple of years ago. Right. It was definitely number one in the country, but uh, damn near number one all time. And so when you're thinking about competing with, you know, folks like that, like it's hard when they're willing to spend that much money. And they paid 70 million dollars to get rid of their coach, Jimbo Fisher. They hired Mike Elko, who I think everybody believes is a good coach and that job should work. And Mike Elko is a good coordinator and he just hired another good coordinator. So it all makes sense. Now, obviously the task there is going to be a challenging one. They have to, some retention issues and they have to recruit now. Once again, we'll see who the quarterback is going to be in 2023 for Colin Klein at AM. but we're a big 12 podcast here and we're focused on the fact that, Hey, um, these good coordinators, you know, they might go leave to be coordinators elsewhere. That's now three in the last year that have left to go be coordinators elsewhere, right? We've had Garrett Riley leave TCU to go to Clemson. We've had Andy Kotelnicki leave Kansas to go to uh, to go to Penn State. And then we have had now Colin Klein leave K-State to go all the way or go to AM. Now, you know, the thing about this is, you know, I think for Colin Klein, like at a and one pretty good season makes you a head coach. And I believe that if we look at Colin Klein's career trajectory, uh, he is on the path, and I think he's put himself on the path to become a head coach. I think that's the, that's his goal. And I think if he has some good seasons or a good season under Colin Klein, who knows, he might find himself as a big coach back in the Big 12 Conference, depending on what happens next season. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility, right? Hey, what if Neil Brown doesn't have a great year next year at West Virginia? And, you know, they want to find a guy who's got some Big 12 association or a young and up and coming coach or a combination of both those things. That's a possibility. I think we have to realize that. But I think there are some concerns here for, you know, the Big 12 is becoming kind of this farm for other coaches. I mean, Jim Knowles, Ohio State, right? Same job elsewhere. Garrett Riley, Clemson, same job elsewhere. Uh, Andy Kotelnicki, same job elsewhere. Kansas State, Colin Klein, same job elsewhere. And the Big 12 is kind of almost starting to feel 
like you know it's like kind of like the lower level and in some ways you know the way that the poaching is going on the way the poaching is happening and so I think there's some concerns that way because i mean the, the same way we talk about hey can the big 12 win a national championship last year tc was in the game at least they were in the game they beat michigan but we're talking about now a situation where look the money gap is going to be larger between the big 12 the sec and the uh the big 10 right and then also you have to factor in too that the talent gap is already there and the money gap could you know sustain that talent gap right also another factor now is that a 12 team playoff goes from 4 to 12 so the number of games you have to win to win a championship is going up right i mean last year to get to a championship TCU only needed one win now a TCU would need to win it. Hey, let's just even say they got a buy, right? Round of eight, round of four, just to get there, you win a third one. That's what gets harder. There is a positive side, though. The emphasis on coaching and development in this league is going to continue. I think that's going to continue at places like Kansas State. I think it's going to continue at places like Kansas. And I think the emphasis at places like Oklahoma State's already there. I think the emphasis at places, and, and look, Ollie Gordon, guys, was a highly rated recruit. Ollie Gordon comes in, is stud in the second year, and was a stud back in the last season. Like, like they can still, you can still get guys who are studs. Quentin Johnson, obviously, he's been a meme on Twitter at NFL circles, but like that guy was a stud, right? And was a stud for a while. The quarterbacks feeding him the rock was the big issue. Uh, you know, now it's not the issue, but like he's the issue, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. So these stud players, they can still come to go to big 12 schools. They can still perform. Right. But the big thing is like, we need more of them. We need, you know, obviously, but I think the emphasis on coaching is going to be there. And the thing is, the good news is people want big 12 coaches, right? The bad news is the programs with more money want big 12 coaches and especially the coordinators. And you know, the risk assessment there is like Colin Klein could have had another good season at K-State and then maybe gotten a lower level job. But if Colin Klein has a great year at, at Texas A&M, their offense looks really good. All of a sudden, Colin Klein is going to be a candidate for some really good, for like maybe, you know, like maybe some upper level, not upper level power, but like power five, power five jobs. You know, hey, it might, it might not be a, you know, it, it could be like a, I don't know. Take your pick of a Big Ten school you know, that, that fires a coach. Pick your uh, take your pick of a ACC school that fires a coach that's got some serious cash, right? You kind of get the the point here I'm making is that like there are some other places that might want to look look to make a change. They could go with a higher level coordinator. You know, uh, I think that is something that's in the realm of possibility for some of these schools. Hey, what if Pittman gets fired next year and Klein is a great year at A and M? What if Arkansas wants a guy who's young? And what do they like is offense, all of those things. It's totally possible they could go in that direction just to use an example like that, right? Um, Oregon end up as a coach once again back in the Big 12. But but that is why those coaches are reaching for those positions. So the good news, once again, for the Big 12 is like, I think this conference is going to maintain some of the best coaching in the country. You know, the ACC, you're seeing them take a lot of swings, right? The guy they just hired, I forget the guy's name, they hired at Syracuse, right? It's a swing, you know, there's some swings in Tony Elliott, it kind of a swing in some ways at UVA. You know, there's, there's the swings in the ACC, like they're taking some bigger swings at coaches. You know, here in the Big 12, they're hiring winners. They're hiring Lance Leipold. They're hiring Chris, Chris Kleiman, right? They're hiring Neil Browns, who's a winner too at other levels. They're also hiring guys, uh, you know, like Willie Fritz at Houston. Like these, uh, Gus Malzahn at Auburn. I mean, these call maybe safe approaches kind of do have some payoff because you're getting guys who know how to win. And look, have there been rough patches? Obviously, sure, there was an excess a few years ago, uh, you know, for, for K-State with some roster guys. But how'd that turn out? Willie Fritz, 63 years old, right? But in, that guy has won at every level. Like, he's won everywhere he's gone. So he might not be young and exciting. He might not ener energize the fan base, you know, because uh, of, of his age or whatever and his general demeanor. But, like, that guy is a winning freaking football coach. So you have to balance those things when talking about who you are hiring, how you are hiring, and you know how you go about them. But I think that is a huge, huge part of this now of this conversation. And you know we're about to do a series about hey, um, what's the biggest question facing each bowl team? 
and not just each bowl team, but every single team in the Big 12 this offseason. Well, Kansas State's big question, I think, I think the bowl practices, or it was mostly bowl practices for bowl teams, but then like we were going to do the non-bowl teams and discuss those. But K-State's has changed, right? I mean, it's hard to focus on on that offense right now in bowl practice and Avery Johnson when you've got to replace now Colin Klein. But look, man, successful coaches have to replace the, their guys. That's That's how this thing works. And it's good that guys are going on and accomplishing things. And I hope we see, it was at the Broyles Award yesterday. Uh, I hope we see guys that are former Big 12 assistants, but I hope we see guys that are Big 12 assistants at the Broyles Award presentations. And so much like keeping talent is an issue and manufacturing talent and, and getting to that point, obviously at this point too now, the big thing is like it's it's retaining across the board and beating those gaps across the board because man, I mean, some of these schools are offering funny money at this point in time. You know, uh, Kurt Signetti goes to Indiana, right? Able to go there and go coach there. And, and I think places like that, like it's still kind of the calculus. But before too long, these schools will be raking in a ton of money. And what's to stop them from trying and poaching Big 12 coaches with numbers that they just cannot turn down? That has to be part of this conversation moving forward for the Big 12 conference. I think that's what people are. A lot of people are, are scared about. I mean, that's what a lot of folks are and, and should be scared about right now is, you know, hey, like, how does the Big 12 keep up the fight in NIL and how do they keep up the fight in assistant salaries and all those spaces? Um, and that public fight is going to be as big as it is, you know, kind of in the in the small circles and in, in, in the recruiting battles and all of those places, too. I was going to do something else for the second half of the show, but we got some news today about Kansas hiring a new coordinator. So the first half I filmed last night and the second half I filmed today of the program. So news is Jeff Grimes is going to be the new offensive coordinator for the Kansas Jayhawks. And look, I love this hire for Kansas. Was Jeff Grimes, were they kind of out of ideas there at the end? Yes. Yes, they were at K uh, um, at Baylor, right? I think that was obviously something that we saw there. They were out of ideas, but mostly, I think they were kind of out of players. I think that was a huge problem for them was they were they did not really have the the cupboard full of quality guys that you wanted, and so now you're going to uh, you know have him move on, and then Kansas is able to get him. And I think for Kansas, they've got a, a decent amount of the remaining staff still there. But what they can do is they can now add Jeff Grimes, and he is a guy that can help elevate the offense. I think it's pretty obvious, though, what they want to do. You get Jalen Daniels, got him coming back once again. And for them, you know, the big thing about Kansas is how creative the offense was. Well, there were plenty of ideas. That creativity shone through. I'm not really sure you actually need a whole lot more creativity. Uh, you know, you like to have it. But I mean, I think Cole Nicky put enough on tape and everyone still in the building is familiar enough with what they've got there that Jeff Grimes can kind of uh, use that quality, I guess, like up front, like just, you know, trying to make that quality blocking they had at least in 2021. You know, a lot of the outside zone that uh, we've seen a lot of success Baylor having bring that to Kansas because they've got the horses to go and do that, in my opinion, in that backfield and. I, you know, I think Kodal Nikki, once again, a more creative mind. Um, but I think maybe with the basics, you marry some of those things together, some of the ideas left over by Kodal Nikki and company, and then you merge that in with Jeff Grimes, his age, his wisdom. Once again, 55 year old, a guy who has been really all over the place, right? Uh, Boise State, ASU, BYU, Colorado, uh, BYU again, Baylor, and now Kansas, like a guy who's cover a lot of ground, places that were in the Big 12, places that are joining the Big 12, places that just joined the Big 12. So I do think it is a good hire. Uh, once again, maybe not the young and the creative and whatever, but I still think Kansas's offense has a good chance for success. And I think the reason why they're not going with a riskier, higher profile, maybe more of a swing of a hire at that position is You've got Jalen Daniels coming back. You've got all the, you know, Devin Neal coming back. You've got, uh, at least I believe he has, got a lot of resources that you had before. And what you want to do is just put it all into play, right? Just put all that stuff into play. Maybe not 
you know, try to build and expand as much as he did in the past. Just, just really try to like, you know, keep that foundation moving and get the most out of uh, uh, Jalen Daniels in the final year. And part of this too, once again, I acknowledge the excitement side of things, right? But, you know, there's something that has to be said for having that stability. A guy who knows how to coach and coach at a high level in this league, although he was not doing it, obviously, the last season at Baylor. And I will say this. If you're a Kansas fan, maybe you wanted more of a splash, somebody younger, somebody more innovative. You just had that. And we have no reason to distrust Lance Leipold. And so maybe that establishment, you know, just trying to keep building, right? Like Kansas went from six wins, it was it was it two wins, three wins, to six and now they're at uh, eight, right? I mean, they're eight wins right now. And so I think for Lance, it's like, what do I feel comfortable with sustaining this, with what we've got coming back? And you've got a bowl game against UNLV, really good chance to get a ninth win. And it's all about sustaining momentum. And so having somebody who is like that is really important, I think. And I think it does help. I think that stability does help. And we know the concepts he's going to bring to the table I'll be interested to see, um, you know, I've heard the co-offensive coordinator at, uh, I forget his name at Kansas, the guy they, they, they uh, Jim Zabrowski, right? Yeah, they promoted him to co-offensive coordinator, right? And he'll, he'll be serving in the guaranteed rate bowl as a, as the play caller, right? Um, but, you know, Jeff Grimes comes along and we'll see if those two guys, what they can do and kind of the marriage that those guys will have together. So, you know, this kind of ties into the whole conversation, right? Like it's, it sucks to see guys like Colin Klein leave, but it's nice to see a guy like a Jeff Grimes get another opportunity to cook. Uh, and I think that's, that's what we've seen to go back to the, you know, the point about Klein, like Klein, it felt like was always going to get poached, right? He's young. He's got a good name. Obviously the offenses were strong. We know there was interest before they followed up a good season with another good season even though it felt like there's a little bit of a, a you know difference in talent, at least the skill positions this year, they took a step down. Uh, I think for a lot of folks in some ways, right? Uh, I think that's pretty fair to say, but they still had a really productive year. And so that's why he moves on, you know, at a place like a, a K state. Right. And so now they have to go and they have to go make their next hire uh, and figure out who they want to get, you know, Kotal Nikki, same thing, right? Like what a year he had at Kansas, Right. And what I mean, after the years he's, you know, the couple of years he had at Kansas, how creative the play calling has been. You're like, man, it's just somebody else is going to scoop this guy up. I mean, to be honest, with what they produced on offense this year, uh, I don't think it would have been far fetched to be like that guy should be a Brawls Award finalist. Right. They ran for 2000. <laughs> they ran for 2500 yards and 31 rushing touchdowns. And they did not have their starting quarterback. And then there's back quarterback also got hurt as well. They played three different quarterbacks this year and won eight games at Kansas. Like all those factors should have been counted in my opinion. They beat Oklahoma. They won at Iowa State. They trounced UCF by uh, 30 points, right? So like they did all of these things this year and it makes sense that he eventually got poached. I expect Chris Kleiman will make a strong hire for K-State. I don't think it'll take them too long. They had to have some names circulating, I think because they probably knew that this might be coming for them. So I think they'll probably move relatively quickly to make their next hire. But, you know, th this will happen. There will be coordinator churn. Brian Nardo has a big season. I see Oklahoma State doing you know everything they can to keep him there. But Jim Knowles, we saw him move on to Ohio State. And my God, what a job has he done? You know, you know why? Because the Big 12, these coaches are great head coaches. And also, they also pick really good coaches to go along with them. I will say this. The good news on, on kind of the, to, in the totality of things is this, is that the coaching carousel overall is starting to slow down, right? Um, now, I know the D.C. spot at Penn State's open. We'll see what happens with that situation as Manny Diaz goes to Duke. But the big head jobs have been taken. And out of the CFP coaches, you know, I mean, maybe an NFL job calls for Sark. Uh, Nick Saban's not going back to the NFL. I think Mike Norvell's pretty happy at Florida State, right? Uh, you know, he, no, he's not CFP, but he's top level. Kirby's not going 
anywhere as well. Brian Kelly's happy where he is. Kalen DeBoer, I think, is staying at Washington. And uh, Michigan, Jim Harbaugh, sounds like he's working on a contract extension. And that felt like the next big one that could kickstart some movement. But I always thought Sharon Moore was going to be the top guy for that job. And it sounds like Jim Harbaugh is not going anywhere, though. So it does not really matter that much. Right. And we've already seen some of these lower, you know, the middle tier jobs go for a more established coaches. I think we're going to see more of that as we go along, because I think as the sport is changing, a lot of these schools are thinking, man, we don't know what's next in the sport of college football. And because of that, let's get somebody safer. Let's get somebody like a Jerry Kill, right? Let's get a guy like that who can make sure the ship is stable while he is here. So I think that is something that I think about uh, when it comes to, obviously, the coaching carousel and the way it works the Big 12. All right, that will do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Send us your questions. We'll do a mailbag episode tomorrow as well. And thank you folks for watching.